Hello everyone, it's so good to be here yet again. And I gotta admit, it's been a while since I talked about video games on this YouTube channel. I guess there's a pretty mundane reason for that. I've just been pretty busy and I decided to uh, put gaming aside for a bit, as much as it breaks my heart, because there has been quite a few really interesting games that have come out in 2024. And I have to admit, this is a rather destabilizing event in my life because this is literally the first time that as a gamer and as a game developer, I'm not playing games consistently like I used to. Oh my God, is this what it's like being an adult? Anyways, putting that aside, I have been itching to get back into the swing of things and lo and behold, Animal World, this really intriguing indie game pops up on my radar. This is a 2D platforming puzzle game developed by Shared Memory, and it seems that it's helmed by a single game developer, Billy Bass. So of course it's always exciting to see these one-man army developers come up with a pretty phenomenal indie game. So yes, spoiler alert, this game is kind of awesome. And it seems a lot of people are sharing their thoughts and celebrating this game's release, so I thought it would be a good idea to not only play this game, but also give you my two cents, not only as a gamer, but as a game developer specifically a level designer. So right out the gate, gotta say the level design in this game is kind of amazing. This is your classic take on show don't tell style level design where the game literally tells you nothing about any of the game mechanics or ingredients. But nonetheless, the game has a very strong tutorial that shows the mechanics, the metrics, some basic ingredients to get you started. So it's a pretty smooth learning curve. That is until you hit your first brick wall, which will almost certainly happen. You will be stumped on regular intervals throughout the game, not only because some of the daunting puzzles, but also because this is a rather labyrinthine world that you're exploring. There is no clear golden path or where you need to be going so you can easily just wander about and get lost in this world which is to be expected from the nature of these kind of 2d platformer puzzle games so if you're the kind of gamer that doesn't have the patience for that kind of gaming style uh you've been warned you should probably stay away from it but for those who do have the perseverance and patience to engage with this kind of experience i think you're in for a real treat the puzzle design in this game is a tier I absolutely love how the mechanics are used and reused in very clever ways, as well as the way they're paired with different kind of ingredients that you've seen before and then are reintroduced in very unique contexts. The environment also plays a substantial role into the puzzle design. Honestly, I love the systemic nature that has been created in this game. You will be confronted with quite a few brain teasers on a regular basis in this game. The game would consistently make me feel super clever whenever I would figure out what I had to do in a given room. And this is room after room after room of these kind of things. Though if I had to complain for a moment, some of the platforming challenges paired with some of the mechanics and ingredients found throughout the world, some of them require airtight timing. So much so that I was wondering to myself, Am I missing something in this room? And funny enough, when I did find that puzzle on YouTube, the commentary from that player was literally the same thing, echoing the thoughts of, there's no way that the game is demanding this level of precision. And indeed it is. You literally have to 101% master the challenge that is demanded of you. Do keep in mind, I don't actually have an issue with the puzzle design itself, but more the extreme precision that is required that makes you redo and redo the same challenge over and over again. So it's a situation where we're not so much challenging my wit, but more my frustration and patience, which I could imagine that some other gamers have much less in reserve than I do, especially when this is something that reoccurs on a regular interval throughout the game. Though on the bright side, some of the game mechanics or gadgets of fuel that you unlock through classic Metrovina style in this game are frankly kind of genius. I love the originality of the presentation and the creative ways that they're reused throughout the game. I don't want to spoil the surprises for you, of course, because they are quite a delight to discover for yourselves. But in the most vague terms, the interpretation of a double jump mechanic in this game is so unique, not on the individual presentation that was chosen for this mechanic, but also in the way it challenges you and the way it can be reused used in some really clever and once again ingenious ways. There are so many moments in the game where I was stumped, scratching my chin, wondering what the hell am I supposed to do until I had this eureka moment, oh my god, I can use the ingredient in this way as well. Let it be known that me as the designer, I'm just head over heels in love with the mechanics that have been created in this game. Furthermore, I would like to praise the art style for the game. So yes, we do have this 2D pixel art aesthetic over here. And even though it is rather lo-fi, it is quite lovely. This isn't necessarily the most layered or detailed pixel art game you'll see in the world, which is totally fine. Not every game needs to be pushing the boundaries in that regard. And once again, I do want to remind you that this is developed by one man. So that's more than okay. But even so, with all the variety of the environments and the gameplay ingredients that are found through the game, 
game, it still forms a very cohesive whole and a very pleasing aesthetic, color palette, and visual design. But perhaps the element of the aesthetic that I found most pleasing is this mysterious atmosphere surrounding the game. The story is pretty bare bones and nothing is really explained to you, though there are some elements of mise-en-scene that is hinting towards what is happening in the world. There are plenty of intriguing and very eerie elements, especially when it comes to these animal beings that are populating this world. They have a very ethereal nature and some of them are clearly have these ghost-like apparitions. Many of them can be rather skittish and they'll just run away from you, but some of them, without going to spoilers, uh, have a little bit of a malevolent presence. Let's just leave it at that. And finally, on this topic of animals, I do find it intriguing how you can interact with these beings. Of course, the game doesn't explain anything to you, but there's some pretty clever ideas that are buried in this game. There's one particular doggo apparition that I accidentally created this situation with one of my mechanics that kind of had this eureka moment in my mind like oh my god i didn't know i could use it in this way with this thing kind of hilarious and genius too yeah the game is filled with clever little details like that and finally before moving on before i forget i do genuinely appreciate the dynamic elements in the environment this can apply to the shadows with the way the lighting reacts in the world as well as some of the vegetation such as bushes that shuffle about as you walk through them or the vines that bounce off of you when you collide with them and initially i thought these were just purely aesthetic details which were nice and once again appreciated but there are also some clever little gameplay elements buried within those. Truly, the game is loaded a bunch of clever little details that you uncover as you experiment throughout the game. And finally, I do find the game has a rather charming sound design. It is rather lo-fi and pretty bare bones for the most part, but it is effective and charming. Though on that note, I do wish that there was more of a soundtrack present in the game because it is rather bare bones, quiet, and eerie, which in one sense works well, but I guess maybe the main menu hyped me up a little too much. That little piece of soundtrack was so eerie and ambient and really cool that give me this knee-jerk reaction of oh is this indie game gonna have a banger of a soundtrack well not really it's actually kind of hollow which once again kind of works in this desolate uh underground labyrinth in this well that we're in wherever the hell we are but since i am complaining perhaps i should list out some of the other points of criticism that i do have in the game nothing backbreaking of course but in the spirit of constructive criticism i do think it's always worth bringing up i did mention some of the super precise challenges that the game demands of you where you need to redo the actions over and over again, well, much the same criticism can be levied towards the save points that you have in the game because they're rather few and far between and some of the challenges aren't necessarily the hardest thing ever, but should you die for whatever reason, you would respawn at these save points. And sometimes the backtracking can be pretty damn long. And in many cases, you have to redo several sequences of puzzles over and over again to get back to the point where you failed. And your Kirby avatar, whatever you are, can be rather fragile, mind you. Once again, these are not insurmountable challenges, and there are shortcuts that are unlocked throughout the game, which are inherently rewarding as always, of course. Even with those shortcuts, sometimes it's just a lot of distance to cover, and it is something that happens over and over again throughout the game, I find. So I do find that there is a lot of time that's just kind of wasted and test your patience more than your wit. And speaking of the save points, the ingredient for the save point themselves are telephones, and I gotta say the pixel art rendition of them doesn't really look like a telephone i mean i guess once i actually stop and look at it but they don't look all too different from some of the chests you might find in the world they're the same size they kind of look like each other i do find that this super vital gameplay ingredient might have benefited with a bit of extra oomph in its presentation and some of them are a little hard to find in the environment most notably perhaps apart from the first telephone you find the second one is kind of shrouded in shadow and there are some vegetations and flowers growing around it so it's not the most obvious thing to notice and actually i didn't even see it and i just went past way 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 far into another section without even realizing it was there so already the same points are few and far between so i don't see the benefit of having these super vital gameplay ingredients to be quite so hidden i don't know maybe i'm in a minority there but that's my opinion and as a final complaint on some of the gameplay elements as you traverse throughout the world the transitions between rooms can be rather jarring the biggest offender being when you're going up screen to a room where you have no idea where you're going and when you jump up into the room you have no idea where you are on screen and literally half a second later you're back down into the room below and i had no idea where i was supposed to land whether left or right if i had some extra action to do it is rather disorienting and this is something that happens 
rather frequently, certainly more often than I would like. And sometimes some of the challenges kind of follow you from one screen to another. So in these instances, it just adds even more stress that I do find uh, a little unwieldy. But even with all these elements that I could bring up as criticism towards the game, as you can see, this is a very intriguing piece of indie gaming. I do generally think that this is going to be one of the strongest contenders of 2024 for puzzle gaming. So hot damn this is at least an 8.5 out of 10 maybe even a 9 out of 10 especially when i consider some of the frankly ingenious game mechanics that have been created for this game and clearly everyone seems to be celebrating this game currently it's sitting at a 91 percent on metacritic which is pretty amazing and already i'm seeing a lot of comments on the internet of folks saying that this is their game of the year contender which you know maybe it is a little early to say but god damn this is pretty damn awesome and once again a one-man developer for this pretty substantial substantial project so yeah round of applause my highest recommendation if this kind of gaming experience is your cup of tea so with all that being said wishing you and your loved ones nothing but the best take care and talk to you soon